Okay, so this is a little bit off the topic of microgreens, but still food focused. Uh, one of the projects I'm working on is uh, seed production for carrot seeds in isolation structures. Uh, one of the reasons to do that is carrots freely cross-pollinate with Queen Anne's Lace, which is a common weed here in British Columbia. So by growing them within these uh, tent structures, it allows us to do um, seed production and get pure seed. So one of the major challenges in this is to have uh, a pollinator for the crop. So carrots are pollinated by insects and therefore you must have a pollinator insect within the enclosure in order to ensure pollination in order to ensure seed production. So long story short, um, you can use bees, but in a small structure, there is risk of um, uh, adverse health effects for the colony. And so a common uh, pollinator used is, um, is flies. And we are looking at using the blue bottle fly as a pollinator. And one of the tricks is do we continually buy the larvae or the pupae um, in order to get the pollination, which has a, a, an expense to it, or do we breed our own flies? So those of you who know me know I am probably going to choose option two. And uh, our pollinators, are we're going to need them for maybe mid, mid to late June, maybe earlier. So I'm going to do some experiments now to see what kind of success we can have breeding our own flies. Um, and so by that time, we've got a good system for that. So what I'm going to do is just a method that I um, found on the interweb uh, to basically attract flies to a medium. Uh, have them lay eggs which will hatch into larvae which will then pupate and turn into flies and in the pupal stage we can actually remove them and then we can store them in the fridge until we need them so we do have some we have a bit of control um, though probably what we would do is just continually breed flies throughout a, you know an eight to ten week period for the um, for pollinators so typically you might use uh, rotting meat to attract the flies, uh, but rotting meat is also going to attract other carnivores such as coyotes, which might be a worry for some of our growers. So we are going to try a method which is using a combination of milk and dog food. And it is just for the record organic milk um, because we're probably going to drink some of it as well. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this out on my balcony and that way I will know how much success I'm having by the responses of my neighbors. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a cup of each into this uh, yogurt container which has some remnants of yogurt which can only help the process really. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll leave this out and just keep an eye on it over the next couple days to see how well it attracts flies, uh, what kind of um, uh, laying we get with eggs and kind of get a sense of monitoring, you know, what the process looks like. Uh, you know, we're expecting a decent little stretch of warm weather here. It's late April, so there won't be too many cold spells. And I could always bring this inside if I need be and put a lid on that with some with some holes in it. So little playing arounds when it comes to needing them, we're ready to go. All right. We've got some Canadian Naturals dog food here, which I picked up at the pet store as a freebie. I paid to know someone at the pet store, I must say. That was very, very appreciative of that. A former farm school student there. So yeah, the recipe is uh, one cup of dog food to one cup of uh, milk. So just get our dog food in there, like so. And then our milk. And we'll just let it sit in the sun. Nothing could possibly go wrong if we do that. There we are. So obviously that dog food's going to soften. Um, I imagine this is going to kind of turn into a mush, maybe a bit like oatmeal. Hard to know what the ratio's like, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I'll leave this for a bit and watch what happens. And if I find it's too liquidy, what I'll do is I'll um, I'll add uh, I'll add a bit more. Um, dog food. What I'm picturing as an ideal texture is uh, bringing me back to a childhood memory. Um, did you ever have shredded wheat? And you know when you couldn't eat it all, there was some left and it absorbed all the milk and ended up being this sort of fibrous sort of mess in the bottom of your bowl. No liquid but no solid. That's what I'm looking for, I think. Maybe a little what I find from my days of breeding worms, which is a whole other story, is um, leaning on the side of a little more uh, moisture tends to be preferable in these cases. So I'm going to keep that in mind, but I'll, I'll monitor and see how that goes. As I mentioned, I do have a lid for this, so um, if I need to bring it in at night just to keep it warmer, um, which is going to speed up the sort of uh, souring 
putrefaction that may happen here, uh, then I'll do that as well. All right, so as I'm letting my um, dog food hydrate there, I've gone to my bookshelf and grabbed my book, How to Know the Insects. Really appreciating the education I got right now. Um, so there's a whole section on in here on flies. So the family of, uh, of the flies is, is the Diptera, and the, the type of fly we're looking at for the blue soldier, or the uh, blue bottle fly, is a Califoridae, or a blowfly. So the reason I have this out is to make me look way smarter than I really am. Um, and the other reason is, um, as flies assumingly come in and start to um, populate this and lay their eggs, um, I can take images and get a sense of what kind of flies we're attracting. So the question in terms of what kind of fly we're using is how good is that fly as a pollinator? Um, so house flies can pollinate even though they're not particularly efficient, but the blue bottle fly is known to be a good efficient pollinator and especially for carrots. So it's the one that I'm hoping to attract and it is fairly common. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that and I can use the guide here to get a sense of what I'm seeing. Um, even though it's like seven pages of identification key before you actually get to this one here. Um, but mostly you will identi identify them, I think, by the antenna. So I'll keep an eye out and see how the antennae look and then that'll give me a sense. Um, so this has been about just five minutes in here. It's still um, that uh, the dog food hasn't really um, softened yet. So I'm going to leave that for maybe half an hour and come back and then we'll, we'll film that because that'll be really exciting to look at through video. Okay, so it's been about an hour here. It's still not the shredded wheat look that I want, but um, <laughs> we'll see what happens when I try to show you this here. So still quite liquidy, you can see. So I'm gonna let the, the, the um, dog food is still pretty hard. So I'm gonna let this sit, I'll let it sit overnight. We'll do another, we'll do an evening video when I come back after dinner tonight, so we can take a look. Um, interestingly enough, when I, um, when I walked out here, a fly flew out of here. So it's already doing its job. Uh, so we'll see um, what this looks like uh, after it's sat for a few hours and starts to, uh, uh, ferment, putrefy, go sour, all these different things, and we'll keep track of it over another See? flies. So this is a good thing. So uh, I'll keep you posted in a while. Okay, so I've just come out to check on our dog food milk mixture to see how well it's attracting flies, and lo and behold, we've already got a good collection of them here, which I don't recall earlier. Maybe they were all sitting there waiting for me, but... Um, See anything right in there? Well, it's clear that these guys are hanging out, I guess, for this. So, interestingly enough, I'm going to try and get a good picture up close of them and see if we can uh, identify what kind it is. They do have a tinge of blue on them, so maybe it's attracting just the fly we want. Oh, my neighbors are going to love me.